All right, number four, Snips says, hi, Pastor Mike. Hi, Snips. Uh, 1 Samuel 16, 14 and 1 Samuel 19, 9 speak of an evil spirit from the Lord tormenting Saul. How could a holy slash righteous and loving God give him a tormenting spirit? Thank you. Um, I've wondered the same thing. Let's look at the passage. 16, 14. So Saul, the, the, just so get everybody on the same page, right? Saul was like the first king of Israel. It was kind of a bad situation. They weren't supposed to have kings, right? After Moses leads them out of the land, they get a judges who occasionally come up, but they're supposed to be governed by God himself where they don't need a king controlling them and telling them what to do because they will simply read and learn the, the, the law of God and then do it. But because they keep failing and because of all the sin and because of all the rebellion, they ask for a king. So God gives them a king that he tells them ahead of time is going to be a hard, a hard time for them. They want it anyway. So they get Saul. Saul ends up being a mixed bag. He's not all evil, but he's definitely ends up being a bad, a, a bad king ultimately. Um, and so he's rebelling against God in different ways. And so the, the spirit of the Lord in this passage departs from Saul. So Saul had had this sort of empowerment from God and this anointing from God to be king. Okay, I'll use you to be king. But because of his rebellions, God departs from him. Right? This is this is uh, not a salvation issue, I don't believe. This is Saul and an anointing issue. He's anointed to be king and then it's taken away. So, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said to him, surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Let our masters now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is skillful, a uh, player on the harp, and it shall be that he will play it with his hand when the distressing spirit from God is upon you and you shall be well. Three times here we've heard that this is from God. Okay, so this isn't just uh, something that happened. It's something that, that God has in some sense brought upon him in some sense there could be different senses god can simply allow as he allowed satan to attack job okay that's a possibility there so anyway david ends up being the guy that plays the harp and it does bring real help to him and this distressing spirit departs but it's not that the spirit of god returns to saul it's just that the distressing spirit it it, it, it departs it does seem that it's an actual spirit and not just in a, in a metaphorical sense, like a spirit of distress, like, oh, I'm distressed, but an actual spirit because the word spirit is used of the spirit of the Lord and then the spirit from the Lord troubled him. It seems as though he's talking about like an entity, some kind of spiritual entity. Um, there's another verse you brought up, which is 1 Samuel 19, 9. Let me see here. I'm just, I'm just scanning a couple things real quick because there's more I wanted to mention here. Yeah, let's go to 1 Samuel 19, 19. Nine, excuse me. <clears throat> now the distressing spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house with a spear in his hand, and David was playing music in his with his hand. Then Saul sought to pin David to the wall with the spear, but he slipped away from Saul's presence, and he drove the spear into the wall. So David fled and escaped that night. So the oh, by the way, I'm in the New King James. I wonder how this translation is handled in say the ESV. Harmful in the ESV. NIV doesn't call it uh, distressing or harmful, but calls it an evil spirit. Interesting when you read from multiple translations, isn't it? I I'll bet you were reading from the NIV uh, or maybe, I don't know, probably the NIV when you say in your question that it's an evil spirit. It speaks of an evil spirit from the Lord. So that word evil, even in the NIV, there's a footnote that says it could be harmful spirit. So we usually think of the word evil in English. We typically think of the word evil to refer to moral evil, moral evil. Um, but the, even the Bible uses the term evil to refer to like bad circumstances or painful situations, not just morally evil things. So that's why God will bring, according to like say King James Version, I believe, or uh, maybe the NIV would be like this, uh, if my memory serves, it'll refer to God bringing like evil upon the wicked man. So does that mean that what God does is immoral to the wicked man? No, it, it, it's here it's using the term evil as a bad fate, as a displeasurous event, you know? So it's a distressing spirit here in the New King James, and it's a harmful spirit here in the ESV. That is probably the easiest explanation for it um, is, oh, it's a spirit that is distressing. God is allowing him to be spiritually harassed 
because of his wickedness. It's punishment for his sin, in other words. Your sin has brought you this distress. Now, it's, is it possible that it's like an actual evil spirit, like the spirit's actually wicked in the moral sense, and that God sends a wicked spirit? This feels, if, if, that's, if that's the case, then I don't think this is like a moral issue we have, at least I don't have a moral issue with it. Maybe you do. Um, and you can just, just be patient with this and think it through. But in the book of Job, you could word it this way. God sent Satan to harass Job. Now, would it be the whole story? No, it wouldn't be the whole story. But it would be, that would be true, it seems to me, in some regard, or at least in a way that you can use that in a phrase and it would be, it would be accurate. God says to Job, like, where have you been? He goes, I'm to and fro throughout the years doing my thing. Have you considered my servant Job? And he's like, ah, yeah, but he only serves you because you're good to him. You take away what he has and he'll curse you to your face. And he says, okay, you can, you can, I'm going to take this hedge of protection down off of Job. You can attack him, but you can't hurt his body and you can't, and he gave him limits initially. Right. Um, and he still couldn't kill him in the end, but he did allow Job and not here as punishment for Job. There was no punishment. This was a, a, a bigger spiritual thing that was going on about the nature of the goodness of God. The goodness of God has been challenged and Job's life stands now as a testimony that God is worth worthy to be worshiped even when your life is terrible. But, but there's a sense in which you could say, okay, God could actually send a harmful spirit in that broader sense of he is the one who could simply not allow, I'm not going to let any harmful spirits attack Saul. He's my chosen man. I give him, I'm going to put my spirit there to empower him. Oh, he's really sinning. I'm going to remove my spirit and I'm going to allow wicked spirits, even immoral ones to harass him because he is in such rebellion to me. I'm going to use the enemy to correct him. I would, I would not have a moral problem with that either. Um, and I don't think you should either. So I, I'd be open to both options though. I, I tend to think we should just say it's a harmful spirit, not an immoral evil spirit. Yeah. And you might be like, well, how could God, one of God's angels bring harm? You're like, well, those angels, you, if you think they're like, they come with like, uh, like, like, like styrofoam cushions around them so they can't cause harm. And then you haven't been reading the Bible very much. 